You're on, Catherine. It's great. Thank you. Let us pray. Our loving, gracious Father in heaven, we praise you because you're our creator and our redeemer. And right now, we invite your presence to be here with us as our honored guests as we worship you. I just ask that your Holy Spirit would speak through me. I would just be a conduit. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to all of us. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. It's a real blessing to be here with all of you guys. Um, I'm going to just jump right into this message. There are over 27 acronyms for the word faith, F-A-I-T-H. I love acronyms. If you're involved in ministry, you'll notice that a lot of people in ministry are always looking for good acronyms. You may know of an acronym for faith. Of the 27, I'm going to mention just a few of them. I may, could you put the split screen, the PowerPoint up for me, please? Okay. I meant it's not on. Let me know when it's on, if it, if it shows up. Do you guys see the first screen? No. No. We did test it earlier. We tested it earlier just to make sure. Uh, the share screen on the bottom of your Zoom, um, the green button. Okay. Uh, Let me do on, that. Yes, click on that. Okay. And then you choose what you want to share. Okay, I'm going to click on the share screen. Thank you so much, Amit. Yeah. Okay, no, we're to... good? We're good. Yes. Excellent. Here's an acronym for faith. Forwarding all issues to heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Here's another one. Forsaking all, I take him. Here's another one. Father, all in thy hands. Here's another acronym for F-A-I-T-H. Fear for anything impossible, trust him. And as I'm reading all these acronyms, think in your mind which one you like the best. Here's another one. Fear ain't in this house. Here's one. This is a, a Philippines program. Food always in the home. I'm going to share with you my favorite one. Fantastic adventures in trusting him. My question to you is, is this your experience? Are you having a fantastic adventure in trusting Jesus? Are you having experiences where your prayers are being answered all the time? Or do you find that sometimes your prayers just kind of seem to hit the ceiling and bounce right back? Could you use more blessings in your life? Does it seem like some people, God just seems to bless them all the time. And you wonder why are the blessings falling around all around you? But except for you in your life, you seem to be missing out on the blessings. If you said yes to any of these questions, tonight's message is for you. If you will apply what I will be sharing, not only will your faith grow, you will see more answers to prayers. You will see greater bless blessings. I guarantee this or your money back. Now, I used to be a part of a ministry called Army Bible Camp. And as part of the team, we would bring in a lot of speakers who would teach us on how to study the Bible. And one of the things that I learned is if you're trying to study something, studying the converse will help you understand what you're looking for. For example, if you want to understand light, the converse of light would be darkness. And as you study darkness, you may glean and understand more about light. So what would be the opposite of faith? Can you th anyone think? And that, that's a, the that's a, um, struggle, of course, with speaking on Zoom is that it's hard to get no. any feedback because everyone's no. good. I'm glad. If you're not muted, if you don't mind, unmute yourself because I would love to get feedback. What would be the opposite of faith, the antithesis or the opposite? And I'm, it's no. not a good question. I'm looking for a simple answer. What's that? Unbelief. Doubt. Doubt and unbelief. Perfect. And the, the one that I want to go with is unbelief. The inverse of faith is unbelief. Did you know that unbelief manifests symptoms? For example, if you have COVID, you have symptoms. 
the typical, what are the most typical symptoms of COVID? Fever and chills. Fever and chills. Cough. Cough. Shortness of, shortness of breath. Difficult to breathe. Difficult yeah, to breathe. Right? These are all symptoms. As soon as someone has these symptoms, fever, cough, we start wondering, maybe they have COVID. Well, unbelief also has symptoms. Does anyone know what the symptoms of unbelief are? Doubt. Okay. Well, no. Doubt and unbelief are very similar. So when you have doubt, you will have symptoms. Something, fear. Okay. And fear is very closely related. Okay. Worry. Now, I'm going to tell you what this is. Okay. I'm going to read to you a, a quote from Ellen White. And what it is, is the symptoms of unbelief and doubt is murmuring and complaining. I'm going to show you here. Too often we grieve the heart of Jesus by our unbelief. Okay, we make Jesus sad. Our faith is short-sighted. That means our faith is weak. We allow trials to bring out our inherited and cultivated tendencies to wrong. When brought into straight circumstances or difficult circumstances, we dishonor God by murmuring and complaining. When our faith is weak, we start to complain and murmur. You will see this all through the journey of the Israelites. Just one more here to, to solidify the point I'm trying to make. So we see the mighty powers of heaven, right? The pillar of cloud. They're led through the wilderness. God is fighting for them. He parts the waters, leaving a plain plant path for them through the sea. Nevertheless, when the spies saw the wall, cities in the promised land, they allowed unbelief to enter into their hearts and return to the congregation with a faithless report. Their faith is weak. By the words they spoke, they leavened the minds of the people with unbelief. The record tells us the effect their murmuring had. So one of the symptoms, chief symptoms of, of unbelief and a lack of faith is murmuring and complaining. Now, I want to tell you how offensive this is to God. You know the story of the Israelites when God allowed the serpents to bite. And if you were bitten by a serpent, you died. Do you know why God allowed these serpents to bite them? We're told this. It's because to punish them for their ingratitude and complaining against God. The Lord permitted the serpents to bite them. Do you see how offensive complaining and murmuring is to God? And I will be the first to say that I have been guilty of complaining and murmuring. Why is murmuring and complaining such a great grievance to God? Why is this so offensive to God? And I want to explain this to you. God gives us promises. I will take care of you. I will provide for you. And he does this all throughout our lives. We look back at our lives and everything. You see how God has orchestrated, he's provided for us. And when we complain, do you know what we're telling God? When we complain, we're telling him we don't trust him. We don't trust his promises. When you tell somebody that you don't trust them, do you know what you're calling somebody? <laughs> what are you calling somebody when you say, I don't trust you? You're calling them a liar. And when we murmur and complain, we are telling God and we are accusing God that he is a liar, that his promises are not true, that though he promises to take care of us and he's done that over and over, just like the Israelites, and yet they continue to complain and murmur. Where did this murmuring and complaining originate? Where did this begin? Heaven. That's correct. It started in heaven with who? With it began with, that's right, with Lucifer. Lucifer. Lucifer goes around insinuating, causing to tend to create doubt. And we're told that dissatisfaction is contagious. And we know what happened. We're told that Satan convinced one half of the angels to leave with him. And eventually, one third left with Satan, Lucifer and rebelled. And so you can see how this murmuring and com uh, uh, complaining is so contagious. Now, what would be the antithesis or the opposite of murmuring and complaining? What would that be? Trust. Trust. Rejoicing. Rejoicing, yes. Praising. Good answer. I'm sorry? Praising. Praising. Excellent. And one more. Just one more. Is giving contentment. thanks. Giving thanks. Connected to contentment. contentment. Okay? So let me show you this. This victory, instead of inspiring gratitude and leading the people to 
feel their dependence upon God made them boastful and self-confident, soon they fell into the old habit of murmuring. See, the opposite of murmuring is gratitude or being thankful. Faith manifests itself in praise and thanksgiving. When you trust God naturally, the symptoms of faith, you just start thanking God and you start praising God. In the Bible, do you know what the four most oft-repeated commands are in the Bible? Does anyone know? I do this as an icebreaker often, and nobody, I cannot recall one time that someone knew the answer to the four most oft-repeated commands in the entire Bible. You know what people usually will say? Things like, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love your neighbor. Those are important commands, but they're not the most oft-repeated commands in the Bible. Does anyone know what they are? Do not fear. Do not fear is a most repeated command in the whole Bible. It's the number one. Do not fear. Be anxious for nothing. Fear not. Be not afraid. Some form of be not afraid or fear not is the number one most repeated command. Here are the other three. Give thanks, praise God, and rejoice. Rejoice is to be happy. God wants us to be happy. When you see God's most repeated commands to us, does this paint a beautiful picture of who God is? Isn't that wonderful? God's number one command is not stop sinning. Don't do this. Don't do that. But his commands are for our happiness. Now, there are two times to be thankful. Does anyone know what these two times are to be thankful? The time to be thankful is when you feel like it and when you don't. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us. Two times to praise the Lord. When are, what are the two times to praise the Lord? Someone, someone help me here. When you're glad and happy when you're sad. <laughs> Perfect. Just like before. When you're sad or glad. Well, you know what? When you feel like it and when you don't. God is to be praised. What does the Bible tell us? From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. He's to be praised at all times. Even when we don't understand, when we're going through difficulties, we don't understand why, praise the Lord. We're told that God inhabits the praises of his people. Um, we're also, I'm all, I, I love this quote that it says, praise is the vehicle of faith by which we enter into the presence of God. See how praise and faith are connected to each other. Now, research also shows us today that what complaining does it literally physically rewires your brain to be depressed and anxious. How did God know? God wants our happiness. And so he gives us these oft-repeated commands to praise him and to thank him. I want to share a personal story. Um, this happened just a couple years ago. It was a day or two right after Christmas. I think I was having devotions that morning. It was before I was going to work and I got a phone call from my office. Now, Alwyn, because he's a dentist, he could probably relate to this. When we get a call in the morning from our office, it's never good news, right, Alwyn? That's it's, correct. It's always bad news. It's always somebody, somebody sick. They cannot come into work. Something's happened. They never call me with good news in the morning. So as soon as they called me, they told me that a pipe had broken in the office and that we had water damage. So what I told my staff was, only cancel the patients in the morning. Do not cancel the afternoon patients. Because if you live long enough, you will experience water damage in your lifetime once or more. I'm sure many of you on this call, on this Zoom presentation have experienced water damage. Normally you vacuum up the water, you gotta lift up the carpet, put in fans and dry out the water damage. They told me it wasn't that kind of a water damage. This was a serious water damage. So I looked on Yelp, which is where I go to find people who help with water damage. And I found a company called the Flood Guys and they had good reviews. So I called them and they said they would meet me at my office. My office is 30 minutes from my, where I lived. So I'm driving to my office. Can anyone tell me what, what was going on in my brain? What I was telling myself as I'm driving to the office. Anybody? The only person who guessed the right answer was my twin brother when I was sharing this presentation one time. Can anyone guess what was going on in my brain? Why did this happen to me? Great question. That's, that's a common 
That is such a common answer I get. That is a great question. That wasn't what was going on in my brain. Anyone else? How much would it cost? How much? That's an excellent question. Okay. Trust me, that question came up. That pro actually, both of the answers, those were questions that came up that day. Anyone else? What I was, damage. what I was focused. Nope. That's a good, another good one. I'm going to tell you what I was thinking as I'm driving to the office. Help me, Lord. Uh, what's that? What's that? Help me, Lord. <laughs> oh, I thought you almost had the right answer. I thought you almost had the answer because I heard the Lord part. I'm going to tell you what I was going through my brain because I don't know what to expect. You know what I was telling myself? Whatever. Lord, happened, help me. Lord, help me. Almost. Almost. You're close. I'm going to tell you right now, okay? As I'm mm -hmm. driving to the office, you know what I'm saying? Lord, whatever happens, I'm going to praise you and I'm going to thank you. I don't know what's mm -hmm. going to happen. But see, what I'm doing is I'm preparing myself mentally. Because if you're not prepared mentally, you see Daniel and his three friends, if they weren't prepared mentally, when they're about to be thrown into the fire, what would they have said? No, 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 whatever you want, King. We don't want to be thrown in the fire. So I was preparing myself mentally that no matter what happened, I'm going to just praise and thank God. I get to the office. We were gone for five days. Every single square inch of my office was flooded. I don't know if the pipe broke the night before, if it broke five days ago. Every square inch of the office is flooded. You see that? Carpet is bubbling up. Now, my neighbor is a dentist. He's my buddy. He's an Indian dentist. His name is Yathi Lingam. He, we, he is my buddy. And I go to his office often. We talk. We, we actually climb mountains together. And he's Hindu. And he had a pipe break in his office. It busted, or he had a leak in his office while he was working. When your pipe breaks while you're working, that's a very simple problem. All you got to do is shut off the main water valve or shut off the valve. You mop up the water. You're done. That's it. Now, my, my Hindu buddy, dentist, he had a water problem. It was so easy to fix. For me, my whole, whole office is flooded. The, the flood guys, they're called mitigators. That's what they do is they mitigate the problem. They told me it would take two weeks just to clean up the water damage. Two weeks. They told me that I would be out of my office for two months. Now, right then, you know what kind of thoughts come into my mind? This is interesting. You know, my, my neighbor's Hindu, um, you know, and he, he, his problem was minor. I pay tithe. I keep the Sabbath. I teach Sabbath school. I'm an elder at my church. I'm on the church board. I, I run a ministry. Why did God allow this to happen to me? And every time these thoughts come into my mind, what do you think I say? Anybody? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Wonderful. I want you to get the theme. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't understand why this is happening. Okay. I want to teach you a very important principle. It's the, it's the, it's the mindset that it could always be worse. The Danish are some of the happiest people in the world. You know, every year they determine what's the happiest country. And usually it's one of the Scandinavian countries. Like I think the year before last year was Norway. It's, it's uh, Denmark. And the Danish, I think 2017 or 2016, they were the happiest country. And this is their default mindset. It could always be worse. Now, my office could have burnt down, right? So it can always be worse. Whatever your situation is, I want you to adopt this mindset. It can always be worse, whatever your situation is. My child could have cancer. It's just a flooded office. It could always be worse. Now, some of you may know who Aaron Ralston is. They made a movie about this guy. He fell in a canyon, a rock fell on his arm. In order to save his life, he had to cut his arm off with a dull knife. Many of you may have heard the story. This gal, Claire Champlain, I think is her name, she was playing a, a reality TV show game. They were supposed to shoot watermelons with a slingshot. It backfired and she got smashed in the face with like a five pound watermelon. Now I can tell you um, multiple other stories. One lady, she was bungee jumping. The bungee jumping cord broke and she landed in crocodile infested waters. She broke her collarbone and she had to swim out of there. Another person was standing in a field where they threw a javelin. The javelin hit them in the thigh. 
when they asked all these people about their experience, they all said the exact same thing. Do you know what they all said about their experience? It Can could anyone have been guess? worse. It could That's be right. Worse. It could have been worse. It's the mindset of champions and winners and survivors. So I want you to adopt that mindset. It's an attitude of gratitude. It's another way of being thankful because it can always be worse, right? So as I'm dealing with this flooding and I know I'm going to be out of the office for minimum two months, you know how long I was out of, the, out of my own office? I was actually out of my office for five months. They told me two months. It turned out to be five months. Now, Alwyn would understand. This is how I pay my bills, how I take care of my family. What's going to happen if I'm stuck out of the office for months? Now, let me ask you a question. Would it have been difficult for God to send an angel to put his put for an angel to put their finger on the pipe to keep it from breaking and busting until I return back to work? Would that be difficult for God? No. It would be very easy for God. And while God could have stopped this, there's so many things God could have done. God allowed it to happen. Is that clear? Do we agree that God allowed this to happen? We know God allowed this to happen because we know God could have stopped it. So I only have two options here. One is I will trust God and praise him and thank him. Or the other option is I'm going to start to complain and murmur. And I'm old enough. I'm 47. When this happened, I was about 45. I'm old enough to know that, you know what? I want God's blessings. I'm going to just praise him and thank him, even though I don't understand why this happened. One of my favorite quotes, our heavenly father measures and weighs every trial before he permits it to come upon the believer. He considers the circumstances and the strength of the one who was to stand under the proving and testing hand of God. I can't read, I can't read the whole thing because of uh, the screen is cut off and he never permits the temptation to be greater than the capacity of resistance. This tells me that God measures and weighs everything. And God allowed this to happen. You know what? It could be cancer in your family. It can be something else. It could be illness. It can be financial ruin. Whatever it is, if you're walking with the Lord, you can trust that God measured and weighed it before he allowed the tragedy or trial to come your way. I want you to learn this valuable principle. And of course, we know that all things work together for God for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. This is one of my favorite promises, but the thing is there's a caveat here. This promise is only for those who love God. You can't be a sinner, reject God, and then wonder why things are not all happening. But if you are a follower of God, you can be assured that the things in your life that appear to be painful and ugly, that God has a plan and a purpose. This is, is I think the second day they had to go under the crawl space and remove all the insulation underneath the crawl space because it was all soaking wet. They have to remove, I think, up to two feet above the floor. Everything had to be moved out of the office because within, I forget, 12 to 18 hours or 24 hours, the mold will start to set in. They have to remove all the carpet, move everything out of the office. You understand that this flooding is quite an ordeal. Now, the Israelites, because of their murmuring and complaining, they spent another 40 years in the wilderness. When I run into a trial, you know what my prayer is or my attitude is? Lord, help me to learn my lessons quickly. Whatever you want me to learn, I want to learn it quickly because I don't want to be spending 40 years in the wilderness. Now, um, I want to share with you some of the blessings and the challenges. I have to move everything out of that office. Of course, the company will do it for us. There happened to be a vacant building across the parking lot my landlord owned. It was vacant. So I could move all of my equipment, chairs, everything, supplies, furniture into that building. That was such a blessing because imagine if I have to move all this into a storage unit. Right away, I had three dentists who said that I can use their dental clinic when they're not working. My neighbor says, I'm not working on Mondays. You can see patients in my office on Mondays. Well, one of my neighbors, who's also my landlord, he only works Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He said, I could see patients on Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. So we said, praise the Lord. We're not going to open on Sabbath, but we'll see patients on Friday, Sunday, and Monday. And so we were able to use his office. And, you know, it's, it's 
it's uh, challenging, of course, to try to see all your four days of patients in three days, but we were just thankful for this. And so along the way, we could see that God was just providing for all of our needs. And every time there was a challenge or a blessing, what did we say? Praise the Lord. And we just thank the Lord. Now, I had an insurance policy for $120,000. I got an insurance policy just to cover my equipment in case something happened like a fire and all my equipment burns up in my computers that I would be able to replace everything. I did not know that the lease was written in such a way that if any damage was to the building, I am also responsible for the damage to the buildings. So that was quite a surprise for me. I talked to my brother-in-law who's a businessman. He said, it's very common for landlords to write the lease this way. I'm a typical dentist. I kind of just skim through the lease. And I will tell you this, unless you're an attorney, you can't understand the language in the lease. There is so much inferred information in the lease, an attorney has to interpret it. And leases are written in such a way, usually in the favor of the landlord. So here's the message that I got from the property manager. Here's our policy. I spoke with our claims adjuster again. He's adamant that we have no liability. He said that regardless if there was or wasn't intent involved that the lease is specific about responsibility. He also stated that per the lease, if your insurance refuses to pay, that you are still accountable for the repairs. I hope your insurance company comes through for you. I said, thank you for the info, Marcy. And all I could say is, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So how much damage are we looking at? I'm looking at about $100,000 worth of damage to the building in addition to all of my stuff. So we're looking at about $240,000 to repair everything and replace everything. My insurance only covers $120,000. What that means is, worst case scenario, I'm gonna to have to get a loan for $100,000 to pay for the damages. Was that my fault that the water damage occurred, that this pipe broke? That pipe doesn't even belong to me. It belongs to the building, it belongs to the landlord, and yet I'm responsible for it. And I could, all I could think is, it could be worse. You know what? If I have to get a loan and I have to borrow $100,000, it's not the end of the world. But regardless, I'm going to just trust God and I'm going to praise God. Now, I am going to, uh, I'm going to just throw this in there. I had a friend message me and ask me if I could do some free fillings for somebody who's a missionary. And you know what's the thought that came to my mind right away? My, my initial thought that came to my mind was, you know, I love to help people. I like just like any other dentist, we like to help people who need help do free dental work. But I thought right now is not the time because right now I'm trying to see all my patients, which are usually seen in four days. I'm trying to cram them into three days. And as busy as I am, I don't have time to help somebody. And then a thought came into my mind, a story in the Bible. Can anyone guess what story in the Bible came into my mind? It's the story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath. Elijah came asking for help, for food. If anyone had a legitimate excuse not to help anybody, it would have been this widow. She was down to her last meal for her and her son before they were going to die. But you know what she did? She was faithful to God. She shared what she had. And you know what happens in the story. As a result, the blessings never stopped and God provided for her food and water, meal and oil for the rest of the famine. And when that story came to my mind, I said, I, I messaged my friend, have your friend come in. I'll be glad to help this person. And the lesson that God taught me is, it's not about helping others when it's convenient for us, but it's like, are we willing to trust God and willing to help others when it doesn't seem convenient, knowing that God will provide? Now, I want to share one of my favorite quotes. And this, is, this quote is a the theme of what I'm sharing of this message how to lose the blessings of the trial. Because so many of us lose the blessings that God has in store for us because of this. Follow me very carefully. <clears throat> Thus, God desired to teach them, the Israelites, le a lesson of trust. But they murmured and complained, crying out in distrust. What shall we do? What shall we drink? Do we not too often, like the Israelites, forget God and by murmuring and complaining, lose the blessing of the trial. 
When God allows a trial in our life, he has blessings in store. But what happens? By murmuring and complaining, we lose the blessings that God has in store for us. I was going through a trial with this flooded office. God had a blessing in store for me. I didn't know what that blessing was. But all I was going to do, I've learned enough in my life from my own lessons of complaining and murmuring that I was going to just praise him and thank him. So I'm going to tell you what happened. My insurance agent calls me and he says, did you know that you have a double policy? I said, no, I didn't know I have a double policy. Why would I have a double policy? How many of you have double policies on your homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance or your car insurance? Why would anyone have a double policy? The only people that I know that get double policies and Alvin will know this are our, our dental patients. Sometimes they'll have a double policy because the wife works for a company and she has insurance for dental. The husband works for a company, he has insurance and sometimes the family members have double coverage. But other than that, people normally don't get double coverage. Why would I have double coverage? And my insurance agent tells me that I have double coverage. I am covered for $240,000. All I could say was, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for this double coverage I didn't even know about. Now, when someone shares a testimony like this, I hate it when they leave you hanging. Like, you don't know, like, how did it happen? Like, someone paid for my whole school bill. Well, can you tell me details? Like, how did God provide? So I'm going to tell you what I think happened. A month and a half before this flooding, I received a, a bill from my insurance company for my insurance. It was mailed to my Olympia Family Dental. When I looked inside the bill, the physical address was for a different office that I owned literally over a year to two years ago in Chehalis. I sold that office over probably over, over a year ago or some, some lengthy period of time. I didn't understand why this insurance policy had that old address in it. And I know how picky insurance companies are. So I made sure I called the insurance company and I said, you have my old office address as the physical address. I found out later from my insurance agent that they actually charged me like 30, 40, $50 to change the address. So I changed the address to my Olympia address. So the only explanation I have is that a month and a half before the flooding, Maybe for the last year and a half after I sold the office, maybe I had continued paying insurance on it. As far as I knew, I had cut off all insurance payments. And I, you, you know, when you sell an office, it's kind of like selling a house. You make sure you cut off all the utilities. Why didn't I ever get this bill before? I don't understand. But the only explanation I have is that this policy was for my old office. And a month and a half before the flooding, it came to my Olympia office. And unknowingly, I switched the address. And I had made payment on this. All I can say is praise the Lord. I want to show you my office. My office was very outdated. It needed a remodel. Remodeling a dental office is very difficult because you have to close down the office for about three weeks. Everything has to go perfectly right for a construction to come in, a contractor, and do the whole remodel. I was out of my office for five months. In the middle of those five months, I think it was March, we had the highest production of any month for that year. How does that happen? Only God can turn curses into blessings. Let me show you my office. New carpeting, new painting, new cabinets. All the cabinets had to be ripped out. I got brand new cabinets paid for for free. Dental chairs. I had dental chairs that were probably 20 plus years old. Units. The units are plugged in in the floor. All the stuff got flooded, so they replaced all of this. Brand new units. All the stuff, you know how much just the chairs and units cost? $40,000, $50,000. All of this provided. And all I can do is praise and thank God. And I have to wonder, what if I had gone to my old routine of complaining and murmuring? Would I still have received these blessings? I don't know. And you know what? What if I had to get a loan for $100,000 and I didn't receive any of these blessings? I hope that I can still say that all I would have done is praised and thank the Lord. Learning to praise and thank God is like tithing. If you learn to tithe when you're not making a lot of money, 
when you start making more money or when you sell something like you sell your first home and you, you make a certain substantial amount of money, it's easy to tithe. If you've been tithing faithfully when it was easy to tithe. But if you're not used to tithing and all of a sudden you just sell a house and you've got to pay a big chunk of money, it can be very difficult. I want you to learn to praise and thank God for everything. Praise him for the food on your table. Praise him for the bills that are paid each day. Praise him and thank him for bringing you home safely. If you make this a habit, it becomes easy. One of the things that I try to do is we always pray to God when we need help. But as soon as he answers a prayer, I like to stop right then and there and just say, thank you, Lord, for answering our prayer. So often we forget to thank him. I want to just mention this about tithing. I think tithing is such a blessing. It's such a gift that God has given to us to build our faith. And it's not giving tithe. We know what it is. It's returning tithe. Often when tithing comes up, people will ask this question. Well, do we tithe on the gross or do we tithe on the net? And pastors oftentimes will give this answer that I don't really like. You know what the answer pastors usually give when people ask if we should tithe on the gross or the net? What do pastors usually say? Anyone? Anyone know do the answer? You be, do you want to be blessed on the gross or on the net? That's oh, the answer praise, right praise the Lord. That's not what pastors say. You know what pastors say? They usually say it's between you and the Lord. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. But you know what? My favorite answer is exactly the answer that this sister that you just gave. My favorite answer is, what do you want? Do you want the gross blessings or do you want the net blessings? Because see, when we ask questions like, do we have to pay on the net or do we have to pay on the gross? What we're really asking is, is how much do I have to give back to God? And we don't want to do that. You know why? Because you cannot outgive God. As we, come to a, as we come to the end of this message, I want to challenge you. You and I, like the children of Israel, and we are on the borders of the promised land. And the children of Israel, because of their lack of faith and their unbelief, we saw what happened. They spent another 40 years in the wilderness. We do not want to have to experience that. We want to learn to praise and thank God because he is worthy of praise and thanksgiving. Can anyone think of one of the best stories in the Bible? Here's a hint. It's in the New Testament of praising and thanking God. Can anyone think of this story? The lost coin. Lost coin. It's a beautiful story. It's not the one I'm thinking of. Paul and Silas. Peter and, Peter That's my and John. Favorite. Okay, it's my favorite one. It's Paul and Silas. You got to think mm -hmm. about this. They're doing work for the Lord, and now they are thrown into prison. They mm -hmm. are locked up in stocks. Do you know how uncomfortable that must be? They're in an uncomfortable position. They have a choice. They can start complaining and murmuring. And what do they do? They start they were praising. singing. They start singing praising and God praising and God. singing hymns. And as they start singing hymns and praising God, what happens? Prison the, opened. The prison Locks door are opened. Are opened. <laughs> Mm -hmm. whatever they're shackled to opens up and God manifests a magnificent, amazing delivery for them. I know that those blessings are in store for all of us. If we would just praise him and thank him, I cannot think of a better way to build your faith than by displaying the symptoms of faith is, which is as simple as praising him and thanking him. I want to thank you and pray. Uh, thank each one of you for allowing me to share with you of the blessings that God has bestowed in my life. And may God bless each and every one of you on your journey. Thank you.